Hi there, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we'll be talking about using the Octane Render Cloud to render an animated sequence uh, online. The Octane Render Cloud is also known as ORC. You can use it to render scenes created with Octane Standalone or any of the plugins, such as Cinema 4D or Maya or 3ds Max or Houdini. You can even use ORC to render projects created in the Octane integration for Unity. We're gonna start as our example with using Cinema 4D. But the first and most important thing you'll need to do in order to use ORC to render a scene is to make sure that you have an account. So I'm gonna go into a web browser and I'm gonna to go to account.otoy.com slash sign up. Now I already have an account, so it's immediately gonna take me to my account page, but if you don't have one set up, uh, it will prompt you to create a new account. Here is my profile page. Now if I wanna actually start to render something, the ORC website is ORC otoy.com and it's going to go to a page that tells me that I have not created any jobs yet. So to create a new job I need to upload an Orbix scene file. So to do that I'll click on the scenes button right here. This will take me to a new tab in my browser and you can see I have a little icon here which I can click and use to search for my Orbix file on my local disk. So let's talk about creating an Orbix file and I'll use the scene in Cinema 4D as my first example. Uh, before I export the Orbix file from Cinema 4D and upload anything to ORC, I want to double check my render settings. This is extremely important because it can save you time and money if the settings are set correctly. So to do this, I'll go into Octane, Octane Settings, double check that I have the render kernel that I want, so direct lighting for the scene seems to work just fine, and I especially want to pay attention to the max samples. I want this setting to be the lowest possible setting needed in order to get an acceptable result. And this max sample setting, of course, is going to be different from one scene to the next, depending on the kernel you're using, the types of objects in the scene, the materials, the lighting, etc. So it's probably a good idea to do some test renders of individual frames or even short sequences on your local disk first before you upload anything to ORC. If this setting is set too high and Octane is able to achieve an acceptable result before hitting this maximum value, it is going to keep rendering. And that means that if you're rendering this on ORC and it keeps rendering needlessly, you're wasting time and money. So double check the setting and make sure that you're happy with it before you export anything else. I just want to double check a couple extra things before I export my Orbix. Let's go to Render, Edit, Render Settings. And under output, I want to make sure that I have my frame range set correctly. So my animation is 90 frames long. So I have this set from zero to 90. And then also I want to make sure that I'm rendering with the correct camera. In this case, if we take a look at the view, I am rendering, I'm rendering with the camera called wide three. And if we look in our objects list, the wide three camera is selected. So this is the camera that we used when we render. I'll go to the file menu here in the Octane dialog and I'm gonna choose export to animated package Orbix. This right here, so I'll select this. There is an option to send to ORC directly from Cinema 4D, but it's a much better practice to actually export the Orbix file to disk and then open it up in Octane Standalone just to verify that all the textures are linked to properly before uploading to ORC. For the moment, I'm gonna disable the open and standalone uh, option. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to check your file using Octane Standalone. So now I'll click on this button to select a place on my local disk to store the Orbix file. So the Orbix file I'm gonna create will contain all the textures and models and animation, and everything needed to render the scene. So I'm gonna give it a name and save it to disk. And then I'll press the start export button to export the file to disk. So it'll take a few moments to compile the scene and then you'll see the animation start to play as it's exporting everything to that Orbix file and saving it to disk. So once the export process is complete, you can see here is the file on my local disk. Okay, so now we can switch to our web browser and I'm gonna click on this icon and find where I placed that file and select it and choose open. And it's gonna start uploading the file. So it's about 78 megabytes and it just takes a few moments. So now we can see that the job is processing. So now that it's finished processing, I'll press the Create a Job button. This will take me to the Configure Render Job window, where I can revisit some of the settings I created in Cinema 4D and make adjustments if necessary. 
Cinema 4D automatically included a render target for me when I exported the scene, so I don't need to worry about this. I can set the resolution as needed. I'm gonna keep this as 1280 by 720, but always double check this, make sure it's correct. Same thing with the number of samples. I wanna make sure that this is the correct setting and it does match what I exported from Cinema 4D. And then of course, I also wanted to render 90 frames. So I have this set to zero to 90. You'll see a little warning here, and this is a little dialog box. It's giving me some advice on perhaps maybe doing a shorter render just to make sure that everything works. It's not a bad bit of advice. So I'm gonna set this to zero to nine. So I'm just gonna render out nine frames. And of course, now I can set my output type. Let's choose PNG and eight bits is just fine for this particular project, but of course I can change this as needed. We also have a way to set the naming of the frames of the file sequence and output naming options down here. So this is a key to the tokens that are used in this field. Instead of sending this to render target, maybe I'll name it after my scene. So, so I'll just call this docking bay. And you can see it's updated right there. I'm gonna click the checkbox. I can add additional outputs as needed, but I really only need the one right now because I only want to do one render job for this particular scene. And then down here, I can use these settings to generate an estimate as to how long the render will take and how much it will cost. The estimate is based on the GPU score of your own machine. And there's a couple ways you can go about finding out what your GPU score is. If you click on this button right here and choose Find My Score, it will take you to a web page that will take you through the process of finding the exact Octane bench score for your local machine. Or what you can do is if you know the type of GPUs that you're using on your local machine when you did your test render, you can input that into these, this field right here and find your score that way. So on my local machine, I have a Titan X. I have two, so I'll type two in there right there and you can see that this fills in the Octane bench score right here. So if I set this to three, then increases the bench score. So it updates interactively, which is great. And then let's say if I tested my scene on my local machine using this bench score, and it took about five minutes to render a fame, then I can choose five, and you can see that it will automatically update the cost right here. So once I filled all of this out, I'm ready to actually start my job. So I can click the render job button. And it's gonna start rendering. You can see it'll say preparing to start. So you can see we have a little progress bar that increases as the render job is processing on work, as well as an estimate of the amount of money used so far. And of course, the amount of money that I currently have available in my account. So now the job is complete. As you can see, it says finished right here. If I click on this, it'll expand an area and I can see some statistics on the actual render job itself. These are the passes that I included in my render. I can use these buttons to download the image sequence. So if I click on this one, it'll give me some options on what exactly I want to download. I can choose to download, say, just specific render passes or just particular frames or all the frames. If I go back to scenes, you can see here is the scene that I uploaded before. I can always create another additional job from this. Let's say I wanted to render out frames 10 through 90. I'll just click on this button to create a new render job and I can go in and start to add in all of the necessary uh, options right here. So we've seen how to render a scene exported as an Orbix from Cinema 4D. I wanted to add a couple extra tips here uh, when you're using Orc. As I mentioned earlier, it's always a good idea to open up the Orbix file that you export from Cinema 4D in Octane Standalone, just to check it out and make sure everything's working correctly. So I've opened Octane Standalone, and let's use the file menu to open that Orbix file. And I'll select my render target here. And this way I can make sure that it's going to render using the correct camera. You can see here's my frame range right here, zero to 90. So it's compiling the scene at the moment. It is a fairly large scene, but this is a great way to kind of see what Orca is gonna see when it's actually rendering the scene. And you can see as it starts to render the scene, it is in fact looking from the right camera and everything is looking pretty good. Let's pause this for a moment. I wanted to point out in the Orbix export dialog, if you turn on open standalone, then when you export the scene from Cinema 4D, it will automatically open the scene in standalone. So you don't have to do that as a separate process. It's kind of a nice option that you have. 
If you're exporting a scene from Maya that you want to render on Orc, you want to make sure that in the render settings, just like within Cinema 4D, make sure that you have your frame range set correctly so that it is actually exporting the right number of frames as an Orbix file. If your animation is 90 frames long, then make sure that you have your start frame and end frame set correctly here in the Maya render settings in the common tab. And always double check and make sure that you have renderable camera set correctly for the camera that you want to render the scene. And then of course you can go to the file menu and then choose export all and then from the export all options you can choose octane render scene. If it's an animated scene then you'll want to choose octane render animated scene. So that's the basics of using ORC to render a scene exported from Cinema 4D. So thanks again for watching.